strange thing about data seems to come up again and again. Of course, you are researchers and, mm -hmm. and you want to have real data. But how do you real so really solve this, that you have so little data and sometimes uh, the data is telling two different things? Uh, do you have an idea for that? Would you like me to respond? Yeah. yeah. In fact, you're asking about me about a project that I'm working on right now called GeoShare, and it's designed to bring together the world's experts, in fact, to bring together the FAO and <laughs> to reconcile these databases and to figure out which one is best for what purpose to make this available to people in developing countries for decision making. So I think you've got to get more cooperation in this area. So it's not entirely a lack of funds, it's a lack of cooperation amongst groups, a lack of incentive to come together and um, actually figure out which is, which is right. There's often a strong incentive for people to build their own empires and f to pound their chest and say, no, my answer's right, and not to come to an agreement. Uh, Frem, do you think that uh, more data would uh, do better governance? You talked about poor governance where it doesn't work very well. Do you yeah. agree? I, know, I mean, it's there, there are so many politics, but empirical evidence and data is not easy to manipulate. If people know what's going on, it's going to help. So, yes, data is going to be very helpful in guiding the, the, the policy making and decision making. And, and putting pressure something. maybe yes. on. Okay. Exactly. My name is Wisdom, Wisdom Akbalu from the State University of New York. Uh, the finding that gov uh, government effectiveness actually leads to uh, increased uh, uh, cropland uh, use is quite troubling because if government effectiveness is uh, correlated with uh, good governance, then essentially what we are trying to say that good governance can lead to land degradation. Uh, so, would you like to throw some light on that? Okay, and please. Uh, Mike Kiernan from the College of William & Mary, uh, working with Aid Data. So my question is for Ephraim. Um, I thought the results of your model were really interesting. I, I'm assuming that the data on foreign aid flows was to the national, at the national level. Um, I wonder if your analysis would be uh, improved or how it would change if you could find out where money actually flowed within Botswana or the DRC, mm -hmm. that, especially with large countries like the DRC that vary so dramatically in terms of their, you know, so what bio stocks are, but also what governance is like. It obviously varies throughout DRC. Mm -hmm. Did you have location information on where the aid was flowing within the country? And then we have the third question. Uh, you talked about the problems of, of um, uh, using more land for, for uh, crops and agriculture. Uh, so would the solution be to understand make, if we are to feed more people, to make it more intensive? And, and how is that to be? Is it, do we need to put a lot of research in mm. getting better grains? Um, uh, we're talking general GMO, or what's the solution if we should not uh, enlarge in the crop land to feed more? Okay. Who wants to start? Oh. You want to uh, Okay. <laughs> no, the, the, the I'll back clean up unless you want to. It was about oh, okay. governance effective. And yes, then... Okay. Um, Let me start on it. Yeah. Do you want Where me to start? Do, do the money no, flow? You start, please. Yeah. No, uh, you, you're very right that we need a government effectiveness. But the level at which the African governments are, uh, I'm happy to see it that it's increasing cropland expansion. Uh, there are countries where, the, 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 my, my good example is DRC Congo. The farmers cannot even, sometimes, they cannot go to, to farming because there are bullets flying around. They can't go farming. And at, for, at, the, at the current level of govern, government effectiveness, we are still seeing an increase in cropland a area. But we did a, a, the demarcation of the countries, and we found that in countries where there had been a reduction of cropland area. A, a good example is Botswana itself. The government, the government effectiveness actually is the highest. It's 0 0.4, it's 0 0.4. The, this, uh, the government effectiveness ranges from minus 2.5 to 2.5. And uh, Botswana, there are very few countries which have positive government effectiveness. And in those countries, we are seeing actually a reduction of the cro cropland area. Now, regarding your question, uh, uh, the, this data is at, at the national level, so it is not disaggregated into a uh, level where we can be able to find the, the micro-level impacts of the aid and all those things. 
Now, related to the whether the, the cropland expansion is good, is good or bad, it's bad because it is uh, replacing forests. And forests are important to the very people who are cutting it, but they have to weigh between cooking their food and re uh, preserving the forest. This, there is another good example of Niger. In Niger, we know the regreening of the Sahel. The people were given the tree tenure, and they ended up planting more trees and protecting more trees than cutting them. Research and development is an important aspect which is going to increase the, uh, the, uh, the agricultural yields, and uh, in, that, in that way, we are going to avoid uh, deforestation. Go ahead. Yes, please. I wanted to pick up on this very interesting question of intensification. And um, I think, uh, again, taking the long view, looking back 50 years, if you asked me what was the most important thing that happened over the last 50 years in global land use, it was a point Ephraim alluded to, and that's the fact that we tripled crop production globally, and we did that by very modest increases in area. Now, where the production occurred has shifted around a lot, but the aggregate area devoted to cropping increased uh, by maybe 15% uh, or less over that period. So that's a tremendous accomplishment. Our task in the next 50 years is more modest rather than tripling just double crop output or maybe even a little less. If we can match this historical experience, I think that will be remarkable, will be in good shape. But there are challenges. There's climate change that's working against that. There's the, as Ephraim said, the yield gaps are, are getting smaller in some many parts of the world. Is it going to be hard to, to continue to accomplish this? But I think we do uh, need to think about the, this intensification in a global context. It may well be that you build roads in an area, they intensify and expand. But as a result, they, you may be able to preserve other areas. So you need to think about it. Important to look at it at the case study local level, but it's important to look at it at the regional and global level as well. And that's the real challenge, though, that we face over the next 50 years. Can we replicate this experience, that getting most of our increased production from intensification? So it's an excellent point. Mm -hmm.